Hello and welcome to another edition of Between the Ropes TV. Guys, let's get straight into this one. I'm, we're looking forward to the Ritson and Zlatikarnin and then Troy Williamson and Mason Cartwright card, which is going to be happening in Newcastle, my hometown, on Friday the 25th of March. That's this Friday, guys. Cracking card, it really is. For those that don't know, this fight is got, card's going to be promoted by Probellum. And it's going to be on Eurosport for those that are in the UK and in Europe. I'm not too sure what it's going to be broadcast on if you're in the States or you're in Asia, etc. But if you go on the uh, and the Probellum website, it's good at breaking down what TV station is going to be showing it, depending on where you are living across the world. But let's get straight into this call, guys, because it's a cracker. Um, First, you've got to talk about the main fight on uh, Troy Williamson versus May Corrett. Uh, for those that don't know anything about Troy Williamson, he was in a fight of the year contender last time out against Ted Chi. All action style. Troy Williamson's just the same, albeit he's a bit more polished behind the jab. Former Team GB boxer from Darlington. At, uh, this, guy, this is for the British title at uh, 154. Um, this is a, this is a real good trade fight, um, a real good domestic bout as I as I call it. Um, Mason Mason Cartwright is going to be a difficult opponent in the sense that he, he's not going to come lying down. Um, albeit whenever Mason stepped up, he's lost. Um, the two the two guys with the winning records on on his resume, Danny Ball and um, Darren Tetley, uh, he's lost. He's had stoppage losses too. And Troy Williamson is a lot better than those two kids. He's a lot better than those two kids. I mean, Troy Williamson has stopped four of his last five opponents. Um, and he's looked ferocious. He's looked really, really strong at the weight. Um, so I expect Troy to put up a really, really good show against Mason. I probably expect him to stop him late on. I think Troy can pick him apart with his jab. Although Mason will give him some trouble early on. Once Troy gets into his rhythm, I think it'll only be a matter of time for Troy. Um, and Troy can perhaps go on to, to the European after this, hopefully. Um, we'll defend it and, and get the British outright for keeps. Um, moving on to the next fight, we've got Lewis Ritson in a 10 rounder against Dejan Slatikarnan from Montenegro. Dejan Slatikarnan will ring a few bells because, um, I mean, he's been a pro since 2008, but he fought Ricky Burns back in 2014, so eight years ago. Um, but for those who know, Zlatan Karnan's had most of his success down at lightweight. This fight is is uh, is is up at one fourteen, and although people will turn around and say, "Well, yeah, Ray, well, Lewis Ritten had most of his success at lightweight," that's true. But I think Lewis Ritten is starting to grow into a one forty pounder. It's taken its time, and he he um, clearly is susceptible to body shots. Um, but he's starting to he's starting to find his feet as a as a light welterweight. Um, and he's a lot bigger than Zata Karnan. Zata Karnan's only 5'4", five, 5'5". Five, five. Ritson's like near enough 5'10". Um, I think one of Ritson's best attribute, believe it or not, is jab. Uh, people say Ritson's a bit gung-ho, a bit all action, but when Ritson gets behind that jab, he uses it as a ramrod. It's, um, it's a good form of defence and offence for Lewis Ritson. I don't see Lewis Ritten blowing up Zlatan Karnan because Zlatan Karnan's hard as nails and only Mikey Garcia done a job on him uh, inside five rounds when when he stopped Zlatan Karnan with him three. I do think Lewis beats him, but it'll be a hard slog for Lewis, who, I'll be honest with you, although I think he is filling into this weight nicely, it's been really, really slow. I don't think he's going to have the stoppage, the, the quick blast of stoppages at 140 that he ever had. Uh, down at lightweight and partly because he's fighting better competition at this weight and if he is going to see his future at European level and above at world level I know he keeps talking about a world title bout at St James's Park then he should be blowing the guys like Zlatan Karnin out um, but I, I just don't see it happening I, I'm looking at Lewis Ritson perhaps winning this a bit later on or, or going on points I don't think he'll win this early um, I just think Zlatan Karnin will probably be a bit too cute a bit too ring savvy for him um, the next fight that I, I want to go into is Thomas Patrick Ward. Um, he's fighting uh, Alexis Cabore. Uh, I don't know too much about his opponent, I must say, but I know I know quite a bit about Thomas Patrick Ward. He seems to be been around forever. 
Um, he's on a long st- stretch now. Um, 30, 32 fights, 31 he's won. Um, and he's had the one draw. He had a controversial sort of like uh, out and against um, against Thomas Asomba. Uh, and I, I thought Thomas Asomba won that fight. Um, but Thomas Patrick Wall can do it all. He, he um, unfortunately, he just doesn't have that, just doesn't have that power. Um, but in terms of skill, he's by far and away one of the best that you'll ever see. Um, you know, he's in and out of range, pivoting, using the angles, um, wonderful South Port to watch. Um, pretty good on the inside for somebody that you could say doesn't have that power. He can really impose himself. Um, he seems to fluctuate a lot between super bantamweight and featherweight. But I'm hearing now that he's seen himself at featherweight. He, he's going for the, uh, he's going up at uh, the world rankings, and I, I think he's been hard done by. He's not being promoted well because he's not a massive talker and he's not a massive ticket seller even up here. So he always tends to find himself on the undercards, as rather than being a headline act, which his talent deserves. Again, former Team GB boxer, won everything as an amateur. Um, from a good boxing family, he's uh, all a brother. Martin Moore was a quite an accomplished boxer. Had a world title fight um, against uh, Stewie Hall, but 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 Tommy Ward, um, I'm expecting him to come through this fight. I'm expecting him to school this kid. Uh, he's so talented, Tommy Ward. He really, really is, um, and he, he can make he can make people look pathetic in the ring. He really can. Um, he's got a beautiful hit and miss style, so I'm expecting him really. This, I really want this to be the year that Tommy Ward finally gets himself in a world title fight. Up in the Northeast, we've been hearing it for ages. It's a bit like Kel Brook back in the day, eliminator after eliminator after eliminator. In my opinion, he should be high enough in the rankings, um, the IBF or at least in the WBO to be getting a world title fight. Um, so hopefully get this win out of the way. I think he'll look majestic in this fight. I really do. Um, I think he's he's still got the, the Thomas Asomba um controversy lumbering over him uh, and you you want to do a job and I, I can see him doing it in, in this fight and um I can see him looking absolutely fantastic. The card is stacked full of Northeast talent. Um just to kind of give you a brief summary of them we've got um one half of the McCormack twins, Pat McCormack making his welterweight debut in a six rounder. Um he's gonna bring a lot of noise from the boys from Washington. Um we've also got Ben Reese from from the same gym as the McCormack twins and the Burley amateur boxing gym, which is in my opinion, if not the best, one of the best amateur gyms now in the, in the UK. At one point it was, it had three or four boys on and a couple of girls on team GB. Um, so guys look out for the Burley amateur boxing club because there's going to be world champions from there and world amateur champions from there, as well as Olympic bronze and gold medalists. And silver medalist, which which we've already seen to be fair. We haven't had the gold yet, but we've, we've had the the silver medalist in Pat McCormack. Um, we've also got the entertaining, ever entertaining Joe Rose on there, great big ticket seller, all action style. Um, we've also got Joe Maforza down at Super Flyweight. Guys, you look out for Joe Maforza, really really skillful boxer coming from Middlesbrough, um, really skillful, really really talented. Um, he's got a bright future ahead of him. It's difficult down at those lower weights. Um, Guys that that you guys that follow our channel will know we we've had um we've had the, the likes of Jack Hughes on um you know and we know that these guys don't get the publicity that they deserve so look out for Joe Maforza really really big talent um and last but not least we've got Mark Dickinson um trains with uh, the McCormacks um Josh Taylor Will Corley um. Down at um, Ben Davison's gym in Essex, trains down there. He's uh, he's, a, he's a middleweight, super middleweight, uh, big big talent again from the Burnley Amateur Club. Uh, I th- believe he's two and all, uh, so we're looking to go three and all in, in this fight. But cleverly, Ben Davison hasn't put him in with uh, mid middleweight uh, journeyman. He's put him in with super middleweight and light heavy light heavyweight. So it's been a bit difficult for for Mark to get him out of there. But that's what I like with Mark and Ben. What they're doing is they're getting him to learn. They get them to learn, use his skills, uh, take his time, 
uh, use his feints to create the openings uh, to to land those devastating body shots that he's got. He's using his jab a lot more. He's thinking in there. So by the time he's ready, he's, he's gonna he's he's gonna be a big big talent. Mark Dickinson, he really really is. Um, so I'm really really excited about this card. I can't wait for Friday. Uh, I might even get myself down depending if uh, there's still any tickets left. Um, but guys, keep an eye out. Look out for this card. It's there's gonna be some big big talent. Um, and keep an eye on the channel, guys. We've got plenty more content coming this week. Plenty more content coming in following weeks, including um, interviews, um, behind the scenes footage, the works. So, um, guys, I'll, I'll leave it there. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Um, let me know your thoughts, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.